hear me it's it's like um all i know is um the mic just went pop could be related to the condition of this computer yeah it's not good Yeah, you know what, this, um, you know what, guys, yeah, since my MacBook took a, 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 a spill, um, it kind of just really hasn't been well, and, um, but, uh, what else do I have here in terms of microphones? Oh, I can use this. <sighs> yeah. Uh, life hasn't been too well in the MacBook department, but um, I'm going to try something anyway. Okay, bear with me. So this, this kind of thing is, is really not, you know, it's not ideal. I'm um, actually setting up my studio, so I'm going to be in a, hopefully in a different um, setup soon. But this is just what I have to deal with now. Um, any of you at Orlando, I'll, uh, I'll give you a story, but um, it's just kind of really, really, just really tough at the moment, okay? And this should do, and I have my road. Who's calling me? Why are you calling me now? Don't call me now. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Hopefully you could hear me with that. Okay. Um, it's less than ideal, but it's better than nothing at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How is that? Is that good? Okay. Right. Okay. And, um, right. So welcome to, um, I guess Sunday night. So this one, I kind of had to, um, hurry up and get done. So I'm going to explain a few things about my whole philosophy towards soldering and stuff like that. And, um, you know, my British audience is telling me it's soldering. It's not soldering. So I came up with a joke that said, um, you know, in, in, in England and the UK, they say we sold uh, everything. In America, they say we saw that stuff, okay? <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like that, yeah. But, um, so tonight we're going to just focus on one thing. I'm going to attempt to build p at least part of this ZZRX40 kit, which was a gift from Joe Eisenberg. The story behind this is um, in 2019, Joe came to a conference and, um, you know, uh, called Ham Radio University. And uh, they, you know, they said, bring him, but we can't put him up. Okay, so um, I said, Joe, come come over and stay in, in my house. Okay, could you be a touch higher? Okay, that could be fine. That could be fixed right you see things like that could be fixed very easily and okay that that's a little hotter okay good yeah and um <laughs> soft <laughs> right 
Yeah, so Joe, Joe, um, Joe stayed over at my house, and um, um, he gave me this as a, as a gift, I guess, you know. And um, he really, um, I really, I, I just hadn't gotten around to building anything, to building it, for various reasons, one or the other. I just couldn't find the time, not only the time really, but more of the um, the inclination because I just had so many things going on. But um, yeah, it's just been it's just been a whirlwind. So tonight I'm gonna attempt to build some of this. I might not get through the whole thing, but you know what? We're gonna try. This kit is kind of unique because if you notice, they give you a bunch of PCBs. It's out of production now, by the way. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry for that. They give you a bunch of PCBs, and they score it out here. And the case itself is actually uh, PCB material. And when he told me about that, I was like, wow, that's so cool and innovative. You know? I figured, why not build this? It's all through whole components. It's very, very, I would say, um, very old school, probably. And it's, it's not that difficult, it looks like. So I'm going to make an attempt at it. Um, and then I just, you know, capacitors here. And what else? We got this other PCB. This is the main PCB here. See, this is a very simple thing, you know? So, Andy Cowley, I got, hey, Joe is here. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? I'm going to see you at Orlando. Unfortunately, Joe, I'm not going to make your Thursday evening um, kit building session unfortunately due to flight timing and other stuff here but I will definitely see you at the other places okay so right so let me tell you a little bit about my my story with soldering or soldering solder that stuff right I have kind of like you know when I was um initially experimenting with electronics one of the big selling points of some of the electronic kits is that you know um, no soldering is required because, you know, some people found soldering to be a pain. But I am not really one of those people. I find soldering to be kind of quite relaxing, right? And um, I just kind of got a liking for it. Now, my dad was a, a shop teacher of metalwork, but he never really, you know, didn't teach me any of that stuff. Um, he kind of just... Um, his main thing was teaching welding, okay? Because, huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Joe, I'm not going to be there Wednesday. I'm going to be in Wednesday night late because I have some, I have to take care of business here. But, um, yeah, so it's like, um, you know, it kind of like, it got to the point where um, we we're playing with electronics and, I have one of those Radio Shack kits. I'm actually going to do a, some videos on. Uh, I have a couple of the old Radio Shack kits that I'm going to do video on, okay? And um, so, yeah, I'm not going to inhale, okay? <laughs> uh, inhale, that reminds me of the 1990s and the election campaign with, um, with Bill Clinton where he said, I did not inhale. <laughs> no. It was funny, you know, even though I was not living in America at that time, we got full blast because we got all the TV shows. I remember when Bill Clinton came on um, In Living Color and he was there and, you know, he was, uh, um, and he was on, uh, what show was he? No, I don't think he was on In Living Color. I think he was on Arsenio Hall. Yes, he was on Arsenio Hall and he played, um, he played the saxophone at Arsenio Hall. Anybody remember Arsenio Hall? Of course you do. And then, um, you know, my, I, I really, you know, I wasn't really too tuned to the political scene. My dad kind of said, one time he said, yeah, I like George Bush. And then the other time he said, no, nah, I, I like Bill Clinton. So, you know. Oh, shoot. One tool I don't have is a pair of nippers. But, um, oh, well, I'll have to nip that afterward. Do I have anything here that could do it? Nope, sorry. Oh, well. All right, we'll see what we could do. Um, okay, 
So let me see if I could bring up these instructions here because they're kind of, you know, I'm kind of like winging it really totally. I shouldn't, but um, let me see here in the PDF. And this is a, a, um, a discontinued kit. Unfortunately, it's a direct conversion receiver and it's kind of like, you know, let me see, bring it up with web browser. Um, hmm. Okay. Zoink. Web browser. And then Chrome. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome here. Da, 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 da. What is that? No. Here we go. Right. And then I'm going to try to see if I could smallify myself enough that I don't block things. Right. And then, uh, okay. All right. Hopefully this should get you where you need to be. Okay. Okay. Right. So I'm going to be going through this here. Right. So I say this project demonstrates if how very few components can be assembled to make a functional usable HF receiver. The ZZRX40 is a direct conversion receiver. This means the local oscillator, okay. Components, all right. Oh yeah, so before I begin, let me tell you my, um, my tools of the trade here. So my uh, weapon of choice is, has always been my longtime favorite, the Edson 951SX, right? And it's basically, it's a soldering station, right? It's not a, it's not a soldering iron. Um, you know, it's not a soldering gun or anything, and I'll attempt to show you this here if this isn't behaving too badly. Uh, let's see here. Okay. You're going to see some behind the scenes here. Okay. Here we go. And, oops, camera. Okay. Come on. Down, up, down. I kind of use this gimbal, like I said, this is temporary quarters. This is not going to be permanent. So this, this thing is old and beat up, but this has been my, my rock. Okay. This has been a soldering station I've used for a long time. And this thing actually, um, has really, you know, I initially bought this soldering station to assemble the soft rock kits, the soft rock SDRs. And it was very reasonably priced back then. I didn't even buy it from Amazon. I bought it from um, uh, I bought it from some online store, and it was pretty neat, I think. Now, what I like about this is that, and I didn't turn it on on purpose, okay? So you have the usual soldering setup. You have the the iron and tip, right? You have a temperature control, okay? And then you have a sponge, which is quite dirty. Oh, it's not dirty. Okay, see, you can turn it over. You have water in here and you have a switch. So I plug this in already. I turn it on. You notice that green light and that, that quickly starts to flash. That's literally the, um, the heater going um, off and on. So this thing gets hot really fast in like 10 to 20 seconds. You know, I remember waiting an eternity for a soldering iron to come on. And this thing literally just comes on lickety split, okay? You might have seen this in one of my very early videos where I was um, kind of um, using this to assemble P PL259. Yeah, and you see it kind of stabilizes there. So now it's up to temperature, right? This gets up to temperature very quickly. You can increase the temperature. You have very precise control, at least for a knob anyway, right? And you have quick rapid progression between temperatures. Okay, and this is not none of this new digital stuff, okay? This is old school, right? This is, this is you know, this is old reliable. You can actually get different tips that will enable you to, to do um, surface mount um, rework and such like that. And you have an old style here. You know, sometimes they like to, um, like Hako and all these are saying, no, well, you know, we prefer to have... Um, some metal um, wool, but you know, I, I think the sponge is still, you know, the best one for it. So just thought I'd show you that. And then we're going to start off with, um, 
with this again, okay? All right, and let me angle this so I could get this back into view here, and you can see down to the kit. <sighs> yeah. Let's see here. And all of you at Orlando, by the way, I'm going to be at Orlando. Unfortunately, I'm only going to be there from Thursday, and I'm going to leave on Monday uh, because I have some... I, I can't... Um, stay on Wednesday. I really wish I could I could make Joe's um, kit building seminar, but oh well, that's how it is. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I'm trying to get this camera angled. Darn it, come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Tetna shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see, Joe, what was, uh, yeah, it's a very well built and very stable, yep, and um, let's see, if you smell burnt chicken, <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm not using anything fancy for solder, actually, I'm using, um, this is Radio Shack solder, this is 6040, uh, Rosencore Solder, yeah, you know, yeah, it's 6040, it's not 6337, 6040, all right, let's see here, um, slop, yep, okay, um, I will be, I will, I'll try to make your talk, Joe, you know, I'll try to sneak away from the booth, right, you know, um, whenever I go to Edelboro conventions, I try not to just sit in a meet and greet booth. I try to, you know, go and actually work and, and you know, do stuff. This year I'm in development and I'm trying to, um, to do some stuff with development. Basically, um, talking up um, Diamond Club and all that stuff. So, okay. All right. Still trying to get this camera angled. Kind of weird. Okay, here we go. Um, just bear with me one moment. Okay, no? Hmm. I just got the, the DJI OM5 and I'm kind of using that to like, um, you know, to move. I might just go for a fixed mount. All right, you know what? I give up with that. I will do this instead. Okay, so it means less light on me, but. Okay. Okay, this might do better. Okay. Hmm. I need one of those overhead camera mount things. Oof. <laughs> oh man, this is a, this is a problem. Okay. What you're not seeing is me trying to position the camera. All right. This is not working out. Anybody has any suggestions? I probably got a billion suggestions. Um... Yeah, Hako is, Hako is good. I just um, have never, you know, seen the need to get one of their stations. I just, you know, Kester is, Kester is the, the industry standard, I think. Um, I just really have never seen any need to, to deviate from what I have, you know. And um, it's kind of like, you know, okay, this might work. Let me see here.
Top, top. There we go. Okay. Right, okay, I think I might have something now, okay? And, okay, you think that'll do? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's see the manual, and I'm always a fan of the manual. So, resistors in the kit are installed vertically, and then, um, so soldering is done the bottom side of the board, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin this iron here and how this is going to be done is, I really should have something below this, but, um, so I'm going to just apply a small amount of solder, right, and let's see, yeah, I think 6337, this is old solder, so it, it probably is a 6040 rather than, um, 6337, you know, 6040 is, is like the old stuff, you know. So, like I said, this is Radio Shack solder back when Radio Shack was still a thing. So, okay. And trying to tin the tip. And the tip seems nice and tinned. How often do I change tips um, as needed? Okay. I don't change, I don't really make it a habit to like change every, you know, periodic interval. It's not like an oil change, right? All right. So they say get the dip sockets, right? Okay. Um, dip sockets are, yeah, okay. Let's get the dip sockets. You know, I have the, um, I actually have the Harbor Freight one. And the Harbor Freight one's actually not, um, not bad at all. Although the Edson seems just a way more refined and much more, you know, ruggedized product than this, um, um, the Harbor Freight one. Okay. So, yeah. Um... And then where am I dipped? Okay. Let's see here. Oh, there they are. Okay. Okay. And let me get one of these dip sockets. I use a tin tipper. Okay. Tin tipper seems nice. Sometimes I might be using the, um, the, what you call it, the, um, the hands, you know, like the clamp thing, you know, so, okay, I put this down here, make sure everything peeks through, right, and then I might just bend one here, actually one's not going through. Uh, tip tinner. Okay. Uh, what size tip you should be using for general work? The stock tip actually is pretty small. Um, I would say it's like one, probably one millimeter, right? And that seemed fine for most everything. I don't think you want to go too big of a tip when you're soldering PCBs. That's like a regular chisel tip, okay? They have a smaller tip that I use for um, uh, soldering surface mount components. And um, yeah, this is like my third tip with a soldering station. Come on, darn it. Oof. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. Yay, I got it through the hole. 
<laughs> All right, and then I do, I just bend one back here. I bend the opposite corner, okay? So it's kind of staying there. And then now I can zoom in. Okay, let me see if I'm not, um, okay. Okay, seems fine. Okay. okay, good. And then what I do is I have it nice and I don't put it all the way up. I put it, you know, a good um, three quarters of the way. I do this, okay, and then um, let's apply a little bit to the pad. All right. Okay. And that probably will not, will be cold. So I want to see if I could do this here. Okay. All right. That looks like a nice joint there. Okay. Let me try the rest now. So I try to tack the opposite side. And sometimes it might lift, you know. Okay. Less is more really, you know. And you want to have something that's like Sort of like this, right? You don't want something that's like um, blobbed up or cold solder or joint or whatever, okay? And then I clean the tip again and I proceed with the rest. Okay, let me see here. Uh, while we give you some help on a video, okay. Um, yeah, on tip tinner, so, okay, cool. Uh, okay. Yep, so let me see how fast I could do these now. Um, and then, let me see here. Making sure I have, okay. I do these, try not for bridges, you know, and you could, you could do these very quickly, actually, and then one like this, oh, I put a little too much there, okay, all right, so I got all of them soldered up, Right? That's one socket. This one has a little too much. Oh well, okay. And you see they kind of come through on the other side too. I might try to bring this down for neatness sake. Okay. All right. Let's get the other, um, the other one, the other, there's supposed to be one more socket, right? Yeah. So let me get that. Um, so I did a, a really wrong thing here. I should have sorted all of my parts before I started, but, um, cause I think I'm, I look like I'm missing a a thing. What is this? Oh, these are the chips. Yeah. So there's another um, IC socket somewhere around here that I'm supposed to use. Let's see now. One, three, this. Okay. 
Oh, they didn't give me one of their IC sockets. Okay. Darn it. All right. Well, that will have to to wait for another time. This was uh, any 602 and the LM386. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just an 8-pin... Um, it's just an 8-pin dip socket, so... It's no big deal. Okay, got that out the way. Got these knobs out the way. Get the hardware out the way. Okay, and... Am I sure it's really not anywhere else? Is it in this bag? Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll solder it in directly then. Yeah. No love lost here. They got. Um... Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just solder it in directly. Um, we took some basic electronics in. Okay, college. Worked in a CB shop. Hmm, interesting. Quick like a bunny. <laughs> okay, so let's see here now. Uh, install the 8-pin dip sockets. 2-pin headers, okay? So let's do the 2-pin headers. So the 2-pin headers below um, HDR1 and HDR2. And these will be here, let's see. Header 1 and header 2. Okay, that should be simple enough, right? Okay, two pin header, and we got a three pin header. Got another three pin header, and here's the other two pin header. Okay, so let's do the header one and header two, right? Okay. I think these are for jumpers, to be honest. Okay. All right. Here, okay, one, two, and two. Well, this kind of came out a little too blobby for my liking, but um, okay. Okay, let's do the other header. When I when I build the soft rock kits, right, I spend all night building this. We'll see how far we get tonight, and then you know maybe we'll continue this another night. And it's kind of late for you also, um, but. Uh, One, two, okay. Nope, that's no good. Okay. Okay. Mm, need to straighten this out.
Okay. Maybe this is not working so well here. So what I will do is this. Okay, sometimes things go wrong. So I think I'm going to just remove this, um, these two, this header. And then I'm going to try soldering back again. Okay, so, okay. Try to get out the holes, the solder out the holes. All right, okay. Could be that I could get it out like this. see what else is going on here um, did you miss ape <laughs> um and come back as a sasquatch i don't know you know um probably you know where i live there's um Apparently, there's some people hunting for a Sasquatch right now, right? Um, there is a, um, in Sussex County, New Jersey, where I live, there, there are people hunting for a Sasquatch. They're kind of like, you know. So, ham squatch, interesting stuff, okay. It fall down. Okay. I got a piece of it here. Stand by. Piece fell down. Yeah, okay. This is kind of proven a little more. Um, difficult than than I imagined but we'll press on here um this here and what I should have done actually I should have had the um the helping hands but I don't know sometimes you know sometimes you don't always have that luxury but yeah so I got this here and then I'm going to Try to clear the holes out. Okay. So I'll just like, there we go. Okay, so the holes are clear. And then we could try to put this back in. Right. See how this goes. Yep. Nope. I could take one of these resistors and or 
coils and try to punch it through. Half the time this is off camera. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, you know, I, I should do that, Joe. Th I think this is going to be probably the, the most difficult part of this one. Right? And then um, it's kind of interesting because this one got already solder coated on it. So it's kind of difficult. But yeah, you're right, Joe. You see, Joe's the expert. I'm just a student, okay? And I'm not, you know. Um, this is why when I was little, all these kids that said um, no soldering required probably had a good point. Why? Because sometimes soldering could be difficult. Right, okay. Right, okay. Okay. Seems like we're getting somewhere. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Okay. And then now we could do both, push both in, right? That's what Joe was saying. Okay. Okay, there we go. Yay, we rescued this, okay. Okay, sort of. Well, I'm not gonna worry too much about the header, but, ah, um, oh, there we go, okay. And the other one, okay. And we got both. This header could use a little straightening. Then, okay. Okay. Well, all right. Okay, so we got that in. Let's see what else now. Um, Next part of manual says we are going to install the header, inserting shorting shunts, okay. Um, so that essentially means the, these are like PC jumpers. You remember PC jumpers? Okay, um, three pin headers, <laughs> more headers again, no. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see here now. Yeah. So I'm gonna stick to that, okay. Yep, okay. All right, let's do the three pins now, okay? And then we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the three pin on here. Um. Okay, so three pin headers go where now? They go, um, let's 
Do they go here? Probably. Or do they go... Okay. I see. Right. Header 5. Okay, so we start with header 5 here. Okay. Then we put one finger here. And then we can tack on a piece of solder here. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Next we go here. Okay. Seems legit. Okay, and then we could solder the other two. We go one here. Bam. And then another one here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we just got two here. One, okay, so we got that header on, okay, and that one was easier than the three, than the two pin. Um, and this one kind of needs to straighten up a little bit. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Next one is where? Uh, next one is header four, okay? So we do header four here. I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna just tack in one piece and then I'm going to deal with the rest, okay? So, tack in one. Okay. Okay, and then let's do the rest. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, not too bad. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, um, yeah, you know what? I have, um, I probably have in the parts bin somewhere, a pin, um, you know, so let's see here. Okay, so I got that on. Let's see what next Emmanuel says, okay? And um, so next Emmanuel says, uh, Install three pin headers, ensure shorting shunts between header four and header five. Okay. Um, okay, well, I don't see any more shorting shunts here, but um, I'll take their word for it that it needs to go on. Either that or they're in another bag somewhere. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see any in the other bag. And it's kind of like one, two, three, four. Oh, I see one here now. Okay. Install the shorting shunts. So we're going to do here the, um, let's see. Header four and header five. So I'm going to use the, I guess I'll use a crystal. Okay. And then there's another shorting shunt for header five. Right. And then um, crystal. Okay. Okay. So that's on there. Okay. Next one is um, install the power jack. Okay. I like installing power jacks cause they're big and they're through hole and they're really nice. 
unfortunately bulk manufacturers hate them because they're they cost more to install because you have a lot of manual labor but um whatever you know uh let's see here yeah so you got this here bam okay and then let's let's solder that in and that goes flat on the board and I'm gonna solder this now. Okay, goes flat on the board. Clean the soldering iron. All right, and I do it like this. One. Heat the pad and let the solder flow. Two. And not heat too much. Three. Okay. Wham. Okay. That's good. Good stuff. What do you think? Okay. Nice. We're getting faster now. What do you think about that? All right. Let's see. Um, okay. Install. Ooh, we're getting installed semiconductors now. 78L06. Okay. So the 78L06 is in... Uh, one of these containers here is probably in here. Probably in this little taped up paper bag or taped up bags. And okay. We got chips and we got something in here. Okay, we got two chips. And a, what does that say? Let's see. Okay, that's not focusing. That is a, yeah, 78L06. Okay, so this is a linear voltage regulator, right? And this will go in to the oh here we go um yeah u3 okay so this is your now this is where i wish i had a nippers but um i will i will put the nippers and i'll definitely show you all when this is working so okay so i put this in and let's see here what did they say to put this in they said Put the U3, okay. Show in the flat screen, okay. Perfect, okay. All right, let us see this here now. Okay, and we're gonna sponge off our tip again. Right? And the Edson is really good, still going strong. It's just like flashing every once and again to, um, you know, to, to basically heat and then stopped heating. It's like PWM basically, except it's not really PWM. It's just an analog um, uh, heater and thermostat, thermostatic control. Okay. Now with semiconductors, usually you don't want to heat too long because what happens is it um, can damage it. So I try not to heat too much. This one's not behaving properly. Okay. On this one, I may have a cold solder joint, so I just don't want to. Okay. I do wipe it off here. And I do another one. Okay. Cool. Okay. We got three going here, right? Okay. All right, I'm gonna clip that off afterward. Now let's see where else we're going. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Radio Shack, <laughs> yeah, it's Radio Shack solder. It's funny. Um, okay. 
Weller, you know, I have Weller, I have a Weller soldering gun. Um, I don't have a iron. So U3, slide switch. Okay, so next you do the slide switch, right? So we're gonna install a slide switch. Let's see here. The slide switch goes J1, right? And well, here it says SW1, okay? So if you notice, it says SW1, and it really should be J1, but you know what? It really doesn't matter at this point, so I'm just gonna put it in here. And this is nice and firm down, and then I could just tack these on quick, and good to go, okay? All right. And attack the opposite corners. Okay. One, two. Okay. I want to push this down because I don't want this to be lopsided because it kind of already is headed in that direction. I don't want it to do that. Okay, all right. Gonna have to push this down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let me continue to solder these to solder, solder. Yeah, English is funny. You know, time flies like an arrow, fluke flies like a banana. English is a funny language, okay. Right, okay, so we got the switch. Let's see what next we're gonna do. Um, we are going to Slide switch capacitors C16 and C6, 0 0.1, okay? Um, 0 0.1 microfarad, so the small blue 104K, right? C16 and C6, so let's see here. I'm guessing this is the two capacitors here. I have a string of like four capacitors here that I could uh, let's see here. These are small blue. These don't look like it. Okay. Um, put that aside. Put these aside now. Okay. Um, these are small blue. What do they say on them? I need a magnifier to see these. I can just do this. Let's see here. These capacitors. No. Nope, it doesn't look like this one. Um, now a lazy way to do this is I could just toss this on a component tester and then it'll tell me, you know, that's a lazy way to do it. No, this is a 220. No, 
Nope, not these. Okay. Uh, not these. These are electrolytics. Let's see here. See, this is a... Maybe Joe will tell me which capacitors these are. Because he built this kit already. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I have a lighted magnifier here. I should really be using it. I actually use this for taking tests and all sorts of stuff. I really should be using it for this. Um, one second here. Okay, I can't find it. You only cook bacon naked one. <laughs> right, okay, I, I don't know about that one time. No, not this one. Um, you only cook bacon naked one time. And this is a, which one is this? This one time I learned you pretty good. Yeah. I bought one from the dollar store actually. Yeah. I bought one from the dollar store and it was pretty good for my needs. So, um, you know. Yeah, USB boroscope. You know what? I really should be using a USB microscope. Are these the 104s? Son of a gun. Yes, they are. Okay, so let's see here. They said um, 104K, C16, and yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, right. So I'm going to, I'm going to install these two and then probably I'll, I'll, um, continue because I know it's getting late, but, um, let's see. Let me do this here. Okay. So in solid shunts, we installed um, U3, solid slide switch, C16 and C6, okay? So let's do C16 and C6. All right, and after C60 and C6, I think I'll stop for the night, and then we'll continue another time. Probably tomorrow night, actually, because I want to finish this up before I, before I go to Orlando. All right, C6. Okay. Put this in here. 
Now, a capacitor is what I always try to do, is I always try to keep the leads very short because you don't want to introduce some um, stray capacitance. Right, and then I bend the leads back a little bit here. And let's apply some solder. Okay, let me clean the tip first. Smells like chicken. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, it smells like something. Okay, one. Um, by the way, David Minster put out a call in um, in CQ, um, not CQ, QR, QST, saying people to write for um, QST. I have an article in mind that I want to write up. But if any of you all are interested in writing for QST, now is your chance. You know? Um, and, you know, for me, it's not about, you know, fame or anything. I just want to get the word out on a lot of things. Now, the next one, this is also another, um, another one here. Okay, so we got C6 and C16. All right, let's do this. So we got C6 here. Again, C6. And then we got C, C14, C12, C9, C10, uh, C3, C19. C16, right by the power jack. Okay. The good thing about, about these capacitors is they're non-polarized, so you don't have to go looking for polarity. Because it'd be hilarious if you had to read that fine print to look for the polarity. I think when tomorrow when I continue this, I'm going to actually use my component tester to make things really easy. And I'm also going to have some other tools I bring from home. So, you know, I'm not at home right now. That's a problem. Um, okay. All right. So. Right. Okay. So we got this far. Um, I think um, this will be better, you know, tomorrow. I'm going to put up part two tomorrow and then we're going to continue. Um, but this is a nice little kit. I think we're doing, I think we're doing okay so far. Uh, but you know, there is some stuff we need to do. All right. Let me put it back on me. So some things, um, you know, this is, this is a nice little kit. And then, um, Definitely having the proper tools available. I wasn't prepared for some things uh, is, a, is a big help. And then also making sure that, um, you know, that you know how to use your tools properly is good too. And um, great advice from Joe on getting these little components soldered in. And definitely we'll uh, continue another time, okay? So um, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for sticking through. And um, I'll see you, uh, you know, I'll see you guys around. I'm going to put up live stream for tomorrow. We'll see if I actually live stream tomorrow. It might be Tuesday because uh, I have things going on. Okay. 73. Keep on hamming. See you later.